Uh, well, thank you, uh, dear college students. It's my pleasure to be here. This is my first visit to Tom's. I've been to some other Siberian regions, but this is my first time to Tom. And I'm glad that uh, maybe you have been waiting for some time. But before I give my presentation, you know, I, I understand there are some Indonesians here, but let me ask you if there is any of you have been to Indonesia. If you could raise your hands. Any of you have been to Indonesia? Not the Indonesian student, of course. Have you? No? Only one? Okay. Bali? Bali? Have you been to Bali? <laughs> so only one. Very unfortunate. Now, now I would like to start with the uh, uh, map of Indonesia. Next. Now, this is Indonesia. Uh, the size of Russia is about nine times of Indonesia. But by regions, we are the largest archipelagic state in the world. You can imagine we have 17,000 islands. And we have around 260 million people. And you can imagine the Java Island, this in the, uh, the small island. Uh, Java Island is the size of one third of Tom's. You know the population, 160 million. Tom's is like the size of Sumatra on the other side, on the left side, which has 50 million population. Tom's only one million population. But Tom is one of the uh, center of excellence in Russia. I met uh, two rectors uh, today, and I was impressed that uh, at Tule, Tom's University is one of the first to be established uh, in Asian regions of Russia. Next. Next. Now, this is the comparison between Indonesia and Russia. So, Russia is still the biggest uh, country on Earth. Next. This is the distance. If you fly from Jakarta to Moscow, it takes around 12 hours. And unfortunately, there is no direct flight at the moment. Last year, was Garuda was trying to fly, but uh, to some reason, it canceled. But if we fly from Tom's uh, to Jakarta, it's much shorter, maybe only about nine hours. Now, this is some facts about Indonesia. We are the largest Muslim population in, in, in the world. But Russia is also interesting. Russia is, is the home of the biggest Muslim population in Europe, and not many Indonesians are aware of that. By uh, island size, we are the largest archipelagic states with 17,000 islands. I don't know how you count to that number. It's a big number. And uh, most diverse nation, we have more than 600 ethnic groups with different languages. This is not dialect, it's totally different languages. If I come from Central Java, I speak Javanese. If I went to West Java, they speak Sundanese, which I cannot understand. But fortunately, we have a national language, it's called Bahasa Indonesia or Indonesian language. Well, there is a survey that we are most of the Janus country and there's one survey also mentioned that Indonesia is number one of the smiling nation in the world. So if you go to Indonesia, you will see people are smiling even if they don't understand you. And fourth largest population and 15th biggest economy. Next. Now this is some comparison between Russia and Indonesia. Of course the size, you know, Russia, nine times bigger. Population, we are bigger. In terms of GDP, we just joined the one trillion GDP uh, this year, and we belong to the G20. Russia also belongs to G20. Russia ranked number 12 biggest economy in the world. Indonesia 15 now. But according to uh, some research agency, at least five research agency tipped Indonesia as the next fifth biggest economy by 2030. 
economic growth, if we can manage 5%, by 2030, we'll become the fifth biggest. Uh, global power index, Russia number two after US, and we are number 14. Hopefully, after we sign the contract of buying 11 Sukhoi 35, you know, our power index will increase significantly. And global competitive index, we are better. Global speech index, we are also better in this case. You know. And trading partner, almost the same. Number one, China, with China. Next. Now, this is interesting. Uh, recently, the uh, bilateral relation has been growing very much. Uh, the last two years, the trend is very positive. You know. In uh, 2016, our global trade total 2.61 billion, but 2017 is an increase of around 25% to 3.27 million. This is what I always said to my colleague in Russia. This is what I said to uh, the governor of Tom's that 3.28 or 27 billion is too small. If we compare that the total number of population between Russia and Indonesia around 400 million. Next. Now, let me uh, look at from the earliest history of our relations. As you know, we got our independence on the 17th August uh, 45. But uh, if you look at the long history, at least Alexander Pushkin, at that time, there's no name of Indonesia. And in one of the uh, uh, poem that he wrote, uh, he mentioned about that is India. That means Indonesia, because Indonesia is not there by the time. And then also Nikolai uh, Makle, in the 19th century, is the first uh, Russian to contact with uh, Indonesia by visiting Batavia. And he wrote five books about Southeast Asian study. Next. And uh, Sir Nikolai too visited Batavia, you know, Jakarta now. And then he uh, appointed the first consul, yeah, Pakumen, that was uh, until 1899. And then Alexander Huber, uh, he wrote a book about Indonesia's social economic sketch. So these are the early uh, uh, contacts between uh, Russia and Indonesia. Next. Now, this is some uh, important year when uh, Soviet Union recognized Indonesia's sovereignty in 1949. Actually, we declared our independence in 1945, but the United Nations recognized in 1949, and Russia is one of the first countries who recognized Indonesia. And then 1954, uh, we established an embassy, and then 62, consulate of the Soviet Union opened in Surabaya, and early 1950, diplomatic relations. So it has been uh, uh, almost, you uh, know, 68 years of relationship. Next. Uh, this is the, some of the legacies of Soviet Union, which are still, you know, we can see, we can witness up to now. Uh, the most uh, famous one is the uh, stadium, the Bung Karno Stadium. This is actually the uh, sister stadium of Luninsky Stadium, yeah? Lusniki, Lusniki Stadium. This is still the biggest stadium in Southeast Asia. And this is the uh, legacy of the Soviet Union, built in 1960s. Yeah. And then we have also the National Monument, the uh, uh, Monument of Hero, uh, the hospital. So this is all the uh, legacies of the Soviet Union. Next. Uh, this is, pic this picture is the something uh, very famous that I like most. You know, this is the visit of uh, President Nikita Khrushchev to Jakarta. I think this picture was taken in Bali, yeah? if not mistaken. So, both men are heavy smokers, you know? and this picture is very famous. And this was in 1960s. This is what I said: the uh, the first golden era of our relations. President Sukarno, I think, visited Rush, uh, Soviet Union at the time three times. Yeah? And uh, among of the uh, famous trips, he went to Saint Petersburg, when he uh, asked President Nikita Khrushchev to return, you know, the former mosque to the Muslim community that we call now the Blue Mosque in St. Petersburg. Next. 
Yeah, this is also uh, one of the legacies, you know, during Soviet Union. You know, in 1960s, uh, Indonesia is considered to be the strongest uh, country in terms of military in the southern hemisphere, and we acquire a lot of uh, military equipment from Soviet Union at the time. And by the time when we acquire our uh, island, Papua, or West Papua, it was because of the help of the Soviet Union. So we had the latest technology of MiG-19 during that time, uh, and also uh, uh, warships. Yeah. This is another uh, important uh, date, uh, timing, about, an, about our relationships with, with Soviet at the time. Then next. Now the second uh, new golden era, but before that, during uh, the presidency of President Suharto, you know President Suharto was really uh, anti-communist, and uh, but there is no such disruption our relations between uh, Indonesia and Soviet Union. We had disruption with, with uh, China at the time, but uh, with Russia under President Sukarno, although the station the relations are quite stagnant, but uh, we never cut off. I mean the relation has been there, although uh, despite the fact that there is not much uh, progress. So. President Suharto even visited uh, uh, Russia next, uh, 19, probably, the, uh, yeah. So in uh, 1989, President Suharto visited uh, Soviet, uh, Russia, Russia at the time, yeah, already, Moscow. And then next, also in transition, what we, what I call it transition era during the presiden presidency of uh, uh, Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono. Uh, this is the, uh, the starting point of increasing relation between uh, uh, Russia and Indonesia. Uh, actually, uh, President SPY, apart from visiting G20, he also visited uh, Vladivostok uh, 2012, attending uh, uh, APEC, and I was there, I happened to be there also. Next. Uh, and 2003, this is also an important uh, year when uh, Declaration of Friendship and Partnership Framework for Relations between Indonesia and Russia was signed by uh, both. At that time, it was signed by President Megawati, the daughter of uh, President Sukarno. And then uh, we know there's been a, a sanction uh, against uh, Russia which makes the uh, economy plummeting to minus 3.7%. But uh, this is also the beginning of our relationships. Uh, next. Now this is a uh, uh, meeting between our two presidents in Sochi. I happened to be there. I was in uh, Russia only for one month and then uh, preparing the visit of uh, President uh, Jokowi. Uh, why I call it golden era? This is the uh, starting point, uh, not starting point, but the continuation of the uh, transition era, uh, where uh, both government are promising to enhance, you know, uh, better understanding, better relationships. And now actually uh, we are waiting uh, for the visit of President Putin, uh, hopefully by this year. And when President Putin visit Indonesia this year, we will sign a document which is called Strategic Partnership. This is the highest level of our relations and will be signed both by our two presidents. Uh, during the visit of President Jokowi, there are uh, four MOUs you know, were signed and there are commitments of 20 billion US dollar. Uh, and then uh, also there are five, uh, you know, five uh, MOUs signed and, uh, and uh, also, there's commitment uh, to increase education culture relations, as also the Minister of Education has signed also the same emojis. Next. Uh, Minister Lavrov, on, in August last year, uh, visited Indonesia, and there are nemoju to be signed also by both minister to establish a regular uh, joint commission between foreign ministers. And uh, only recently, only 
few days ago, on the 13th of March, uh, Minister, uh, the first lady minister of Indonesia, Ibu Ratna, visited uh, Moscow, and uh, both countries committed you know, to bolster our relations. And we are preparing uh, many MOUs, uh, strategic partner, apart from the strategic partnership will be signed during the visit of uh, President uh, uh, Putin. Now, this is just a glimpse of what we have achieved so far. Uh, I think you read some papers that you know, we just signed a contract of acquiring uh, Sukhoi 35. Uh, and this is in accordance with our new uh, law on, uh, on defense procurement. And then there is interest of Garuda to fly, but so far we have not got the confirmation yet. But there is one uh, I think private airlines, UTR, is considering to fly to Jakarta or to Bali, to Bali, then pass our three times a week. And uh, you know we have I mentioned already in the trade increase, and also most interestingly also the number of tourists from Russia increased by 37 percent. This is the highest in the world. But if we compare with other countries like Vietnam and China and, and, and Thailand, still relatively very small. Uh, last year Vietnam could attract some 100, you know, 510,000. Uh, visitors uh, or, or a tourist r a rush from Russia, but China could attract 1.3 million, but Indonesia could attract only 110. But this is because there is no direct flight between the two countries. But apart from that, uh, from my perspective, uh, for the first time in August 2016, we established the first Indonesian festival. At the time, it could attract something like uh, 68,000, and then based on the success, we uh, continue to have a second Indonesian festival last year, and now we are planning to have bigger Indonesian festival. This is like one-stop shopping. You know, you can do business, you can perform cultural events, and uh, you can do investment in in one uh, package. You know, of the what we call the Indonesian festival or festival Indonesia. Uh, so this is just roughly just to trigger you if you have any question about Indonesian relations with Russia. But before that, I think I would like to uh, show you a video of the Indonesian festival, the last festival, uh, second festival held on the 4th to 6th August at Hermitage Garden. Uh, it is a park for 6.5 hectares, but apparently the demand is growing. There are a lot of interest from Indonesia, and we try to organize the next festival, the third festival at Krasnaya Presnya Park, uh, which has uh, 16.5 hectare, which is three times bigger than uh, the Hermitage Garden. So I'll show you about five minutes uh, documentation of the festival, and then I'm pleased to have any question. I was told by my friend, if you ask question, I will give you one piece of, uh, what is it called? It's a book divider, yeah? And uh, it's made of skin of leather, small skin. Yeah. So I hope there will be not a lot of questions. We have some. Tadi yang notice kecil mungkin ya.
juga disampaikan bahwa mahasiswa-mahasiswa di sini akan merencanakan juga oh. jadi keterlibatan apa ya khususnya peserta di sini Saya mungkin perlu yang pakai bahasa Rusia ya captionnya nanti. This is batik making. Okay, thank you. So, if you have any question, if you could raise your hands, mention your name, where you are from, and what you are studying here, please. And I give you one. Yes, left side. Then number two, number three. Okay, from. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, well, I'm, I haven't heard about that, but it it will be a great honor for Indonesia if uh, RT is considering to have an Indonesian uh, channel because now there are some, at least I know one uh, Russian uh, media who already uh, not broadcast but uh, uh, is, uh, is like Russia beyond the headlines. They have the Indonesian version, so and it will give more opportunity for. Indonesian to understand more about Russia because Russian image is, uh, to be honest, is not that that good because most of Indonesian people are watching Hollywood movie, you know, where they describe Russian as like KGB, you know, like they don't smile, you know, uh, mafia and so on. But when they go to Russia, they will understand that this is not the case, you know. Last year, there are there were about 1,000 Indonesian visiting uh, Indonesian festival. Most of them. Almost all of them are first visitor, and when they come here, they change, you know, 180 percent about the image of Russia. You know, at least at, at least now I can ask, you know, the my uh, students who are here. We had a meeting last night, and, and they told me they don't have any problem except for the extreme weather. But they took photograph of, you know, uh, in, in behind the uh, snow, and they sent to. Their country home because there is no snow in Indonesia, and they put update every day, you know, uh, sitting in the snow, 
in their Facebook. So it, it's, it's good. If they have, this is one for you. <laughs> and then, yeah, okay. Uh, second, second, which one? There is uh, second one, and then, oh, here, yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, please. Uh, I don't know if I can get your question, but I think you're asking about the Indonesian students, yeah? uh, how to treat them. It's easy, you know? just get together with them. And uh, you know, the one most biggest problem for Indonesian, most Indonesians are very shy, usually, yeah? very silent, unless they're asked. You know, even when they don't know, they're, 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 they're silent. So this is about culture. Yeah? But uh, to my uh, experience after visiting my Indonesian students, uh, they can adjust to the local custom. Uh, the first difficulty is, of course, food, you know, because there are so varieties of food in Indonesia. But uh, once they come here, the most complained one is about food. But uh, then, after a few months, I think they will be familiar with boars, you know, <laughs> with uh, moors, you know. I think so. Uh, doesn't make different. I mean, it's it's just like uh, other international students. So, uh, language, of course, the biggest problem for Indonesian here. Yeah. Oh, international students, all oh, right, right, yeah, yeah. I don't know the exact numbers, but uh, there are growing interest of, of international students uh, to study in many universities in Indonesia. Uh, the government also provided, provided with uh, scholarships for one year, it's called Dharma Siswa. Uh, so far, about 150 Russian have been participating at the uh, 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 scholarship. We also provide by foreign ministry, uh, like a cultural program for three months for Russian who are learning about Indonesian culture. But we also receive many other international students, uh, mostly from Australia, from, uh, from East, Western Europe, but not many from Eastern Europe. But, but the number of, of Russians uh, to study Indonesia is growing. And now Kazan State University, for the first time, opened an Indonesian department uh, last year. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. I think there's one question from the screen, yeah, please. Yes, I have a question. Which of the economic sectors in Indonesia fares the biggest growth? Oh, I mean which sector? Well, uh, it's difficult. I'm not economist, but, uh, <laughs> but the biggest contribution to the economic growth is first domestic market. Around 50% of our growth supported by domestic market because we have the big population with the uh, uh, number of youth. I think, I think we can predict that uh, in in few years we will become or we will experience the baby boomer. You know, because most of the uh, uh, average age of Indonesian are still in the productive era. So, 50% uh, uh, supported by the uh, uh, domestic consumption. Yeah. But other areas also growing. Uh, well. Uh, our contribution, second after uh, domestic uh, consumption, is basically commodities and mining. Uh, uh, especially, uh, we are good in, uh, in, in, in coal, uh, mangan, and then also uh, nickel, so ferro-nickel, yeah. uh, but commodities also. We, our second biggest export to Russia is uh, CPO, palm oil. Uh, so that, uh, also part of the uh, biggest contribution to our uh, growth, yeah. yeah. Thank you, this one, I think I saw one, okay. Um, yeah, next, yes, please. Uh, so, sorry, I can't I can hear your voice. <laughs> sorry, could you, could you speak, speak louder, please? Oh, right, yes, yes. Uh -huh. uh, what types of Russian farming uh, in what country is also in Indonesia? Which other countries? Uh, no, about the weapons are no. used. 
From Russia. Yes. All right, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, after more than 10 and a half years, uh, we finally uh, proceed with the signing of uh, procurement of 11 Sukhoi 35. It's not easy uh, because the Americans are not happy for us. You know, I, I was told by my minister, the foreign minister of, of, of of U.S. who are re who resign also complain about that, but we told them, look, we are an independent country. We buy F-16 from you. We buy Boeing from you. Why can't we buy Sukhoi from from, from Russia? Yeah, and uh, our history of relations uh, with the military equipment has been long before during President Sukarno era. Most of our military equipment from Russia, and up to now, I was told there are thirty percent of our military come from Russia. So apart from the uh, Sukhoi, we are interested especially in the Kilo class, the submarines, and then the air defense system. So quite plenty. And after two years I've uh, uh, been in, in Russia, actually Russia has also been very advanced in IT technology. Yeah? And it's unthinkable before I came here because you know, everybody in Russia just know Google. You know? But now we have here Yandex and so on, but also uh, developed by profit like Telegram, for example. So, Russia actually, many, many things Russia can offer. And uh, I'm pleased actually that uh, most of our students who are studying in Russia are mostly doing on engineering uh, and then mining, which uh, Russians are very expert and relatively quite cheap compared to Western education. Yeah. Does it answer your question? Okay, thank you. Another piece for you. <laughs> All right, okay. Next. Yes, please. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. That's all? Okay. Uh, yeah, one of our uh, uh, great potential from Indonesia so to export fish. We have huge, you know, uh, archipelago, 75% of our territory are waters. But I know there are some problems because uh, some of our exporters could not meet the standard of quality and we are working on that. Uh, some even have been suspended but now we are working with the Russian government uh, to increase the export of Indonesian fish and of course uh, we tell our friends in Indonesia you know, we have to meet the criteria because here the uh, criteria is quite strict and this is I mean mostly of the uh, export of this problem in Indonesia related to the level of mercury. And we have to admit that we have to lot, still have a lot to do that. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, this is a very good question. Uh, interestingly, Indonesia and Russia are not competitors. Uh, we are complementary. We need each other. You know? uh, we import a lot of machinery uh, and then uh, potassium. This is a uh, substance to, for fertilizer. And uh, we also import uh, a certain kind of oil, you know, like vegetable oil. I can't remember the name. But but also uh, some substance from uh, nuclear uh, energy. And on the contrary, we import a lot from Russia, uh, also for the first time green wheat. Last year, we recorded the highest import from Russia, uh, more than 300 times. Because last year, the last two years, this is thanks to sanction, sanction also, uh, Russia becoming the uh, number one uh, producer of wheat or grain. And uh, this is good because we don't grow grain in Indonesia. We have to import. 
You know Indonesians are the second biggest eater of noodle after China. And we don't grow grain, so we import a lot from, from Russia. On the contrary, Russia also import a lot from Indonesia, like number one, CPO. And then some machinery and electronic products, uh, textile garment, cafe. For, uh, cafe is interesting because last year, uh, the, 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 the highest increase of our export to Russia is cafe and tea. Cafe is part of lifestyle in Russia, and we produce cafe. So it's complementary. Also, we acquire like what was asked before, you know, military product from Indonesia. So we are not competitors. We are in the process now of signing FTA, free trade agreement with Euro Asian Economic Union. Uh, Vietnam has signed uh, with, with Russia. So what does it mean? Most of our products now have tax from Russia because we are not member, we are not part, and we are now in the process of signing that. If, if once the FTA is signed, I think there will be uh, significantly increase our trade relations. Yeah. And uh, interestingly also on, on people to people contact, you know, as I mentioned before, uh, Russian contribute one of the highest in terms of growth, uh, tourists. But from Indonesia also, last year there were 18,000 uh, tourists from Indonesia, from 5,000, so it's, it's almost more than double. Uh, it's interesting also that now Indonesian be becoming realized after you know we had some festival, two festivals, that Russia is actually home of the uh, biggest Muslim population on earth. Compared to Western countries, most of them are migrants, and and in Russia, it's Russian people who had you know uh, who uh, conquered uh, Islam even long before Islam came to Indonesia. So many travel agencies in Indonesia they organize like. Umrah plus, you know Umrah, Umrah visit to Makkah, yeah, like Hajj. And usually plus means visiting other Middle Eastern countries. Now they started visiting Russia. They visit the Grand Mosque, you know, Cathedral Mosque in, uh, uh, in Moscow, and then Blue Mosque in St. Petersburg, and then Kulsarif Mosque in uh, Kazan. Even last, two years ago in December, for the first time there are Indonesian couple who got married in Kazan Mosque. I told the president of Tatarstan, Mr. Minikarnov, look, usually Russian got married in Bali. No, there is an Indonesian got married to couple, no, got married in Kazan, and he sent his minister of culture to witness the marriage. No, one piece. Yes, okay, yes, please. To study Russian. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Unlike Malaysian, actually, English is not widely spoken in Indonesia. Uh, all of Indonesia they speak Bahasa Indonesia, Indonesian language. Uh, of course, English is the most popular yeah, language other than Indonesian language. But now, there are also growing interest of studying other languages like German, like France, like Arabic, and so on. But recently, about Russian. Uh, unfortunately, now there are only two universities offering Russian, University of Indonesia and Pajajaran University in Bandung. Uh, I convinced my university where I come from, uh, Gajah Mada University, and they're interested to open Russian study first and then Russian teaching. So the interest is growing. If you look at the number of applicants uh, for the uh, 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 studying in Russian, the number is quite significant now. Uh, there is more competition uh, to study in Russian, and first of course they have to uh, learn. You know, a beginner at in, in, in Indonesia, they, you have a cultural center, Russian cultural center, but most of them they just come jump to Russia and studying Russian. So, I think with the increasing number of bilateral trade investment and so on, uh, it will create an opportunities. I saw myself for some big Russian companies in Indonesia. I'm glad that those who are working in the companies, the Russian companies, are Indonesian who speak Russian and Russian who speak Indonesian. So there are a lot of opportunities also for you if you study Indonesian because there will be more interest in the future. And there are many big uh, Russian companies who have already been in Indonesia investing in Indonesia. Yeah. What, what are you studying, by the way? English, okay, yeah. Okay. So it seems that everybody is tired because it's a long day today. So I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for the delay. 
uh, it's my pleasure. I've been very, uh, I mean, I have very, oh, well, yes. <laughs> Uh, research library. Research library. Yeah. And I would like to express my deep concern and gratitude mm. to our uh, international students from Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Don't they behave very well? Yes, because. <laughs> Let me know if they don't. <laughs> I know not all. <laughs> The Indonesian students are easy. They don't survive without rice, so just give them rice and they will survive. Yeah. So, and I should, I should outline that uh, Indonesian students, they became the real cultural ambassadors uh, of Indonesia. Uh, and they are participating thank you very much. Thank you very much. Actually, last night, we had gathering with about 30 Indonesian students. And I'm proud because uh, they have, from their own mind, uh, proposed me to have like an Indonesian day sometime here in, uh, in Tom's. And uh, we fully supported them. And we asked them to define what kind of uh, uh, Indonesian day will be. And uh, actually, I just discussed this with, us, with the rector. The rector of the state university is very supportive. And also, I talked this with uh, the uh, governor. And the governor was very pleased. So although the number is not very big, but around 30, 31, but uh, they are very proud of themselves, and they are very proud to present the Indonesian culture here. So this makes Russian or more multicultural. And I think, uh, I hope the Indonesian students uh, have also contributed to our relationship. So as I mentioned, uh, one thing what makes Indonesian students, you know, they are looking always for rice, and everything should be hot, like sambal, you know, like chili, chili sauce, you know. As long as you provide them with rice and, and chili, they will survive, you know, especially during, during, during winter. Yeah? Okay. okay, again, I thank you very much. Uh, and uh, uh, although, although I visit here only two days, but uh, this was very productive uh, visit for me. Even yesterday, I went to uh, uh, the Red Mosque. Uh, I was surprised that there are two mosques here in Tom's, and uh, I was told there are also some other mosques around uh, uh, the uh, oblast. Mm -hmm. And uh, this indicates you know, how multicultural is Russia. And uh, I'm also glad you know, that we have very, very similar beliefs. There are, we have tolerant society. And today, I had uh, also lengthy programs meeting with the uh, uh, first uh, Polytechnic University, and then with Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I bring also a businessman from Indonesia, Pa Muhammad Lutfi. Uh, he's interested in, in uh, oil and gas. Uh, just before this meeting, he had further discussion uh, with Chamber of Commerce, to, especially to increase uh, our trade. And then uh, I met the governor, of course, and meeting with the director. So it's been very productive. Uh, I hope this is not my last visit to Tom's and uh, I promised to member of Chamber of Government Governor because of the uh, you know period of my program here. So I will promise I promise to I will come again to Tom's and hopefully we can see again and hopefully our Indonesian student uh, could uh, you know organize uh, Indonesian Day someday and of course we need your assistance. So again with this I conclude my presentation. I thank you very much. Spasi Babul Saya Dasi Danya.